live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Google Cloud Next 19. Brought to you by Google Cloud and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live coverage here with theCUBE in San Francisco, California, Moscone South. I'm Jeff Warrior, Dave Vellante, here at Google Next 2019, and we have here in theCUBE for the first time as a Google employee, CUBE alumni, Amit Savory, head of platform for Google Cloud. Great to see you. Oh, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to see you guys again. So. so you're just now on the job, not even two months, 25 years, 23? Uh, close to 25, yes. Three years at Oracle. Um, TK's over here, CEO at part of Google. They got a lot of action going on here. Oh, definitely, it's very exciting times. I mean, I, I've spent some time kind of learning and hearing about what the vision at Google has been. And it's very clear they're here to win it. And we have the investment that they're making, the innovation which is going on is very attractive and very exciting, I think. Always love our conversations in the past on theCUBE around platform. You got a deep technical background. Um, you've been in the business, you've seen many ways of innovation yeah. up and down the stack. So it's not, I don't think there's, there's a move you haven't seen in the business. But cloud, with there's some new things happening. It's kind of, but it, it, it's all part of other things kind of meshing together, pun intended, service meshes. Yeah. But as customers move to the cloud from on-prem, having cloud, multiple clouds, multiple dimensions of change. Yes. What's your take on this? Because I think you have a unique perspective in that 20 something years of Oracle, leader in databases and software. Yeah. Google's got great leadership in tech, yeah. but now they're standing up a whole new cloud business at a whole nother level. Your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, I think if you look at what's going on, I talk to a lot of customers uh, and developers and, uh, and IT teams, and clearly I think they are overwhelmed with the different things which are going on in this space. So how do you make it simple? How do you make it open? How do you make it hybrid so you have flexibility of choice? It's becoming top of the mind for many of the users nowadays. Uh, the lock-in, which many vendors currently provide, it becomes very difficult for many of these uh, users to kind of keep on moving around and meet the business requirements. So I think uh, having a solution and technology stack, which is really understanding that complexity around that and making it simple enough to adopt, I think is important. Yeah, one of the things, we watch these keynotes very carefully, especially when you have a new CEO, Thomas Curian, we follow you know, NetApp as well, his, his twin brother, but his first opening line was a little, you know, Tip of the cap to Diane Green, who I thought was very classy. If you hear all the other things, scale, and then obviously the multi-cloud piece, and then Jennifer Lynn gave a great demo, yes. and she said something in her demo I want to get your reaction to. One of the business benefits of Anthos is negotiating contracts, um, meaning choice. Yes. Well, so lock-in shifting, this means lock-in is not your grandfather's lock-in. You know, you worked at Oracle, which has an amazing lock-in spec in, in databases, this is a whole new world. Yeah. It's capabilities, the new lock-in, or what is the new, I mean, I guess lock-in is no, function I think, of. I think, the, I mean, again, it's not ideas, the lock-in is definitely not the right way of kind of looking at it, right? The way to kind of really make sure you attract users and attract uh, customers is to really make uh, value add capabilities in there. Right, and then if the customers really love it, they're going to keep on using it, irrespective of whether you call it lock-in or you provide some proprietariness or not, right? Value. Right, value is complete, exactly. So I think it's uh, important to really think about how you build some of the services and technologies which give this value, but also give you the choice of moving if you want to. That, I think, if you start from the beginning that it's, there's no choice, then the value doesn't come out ever. So value is the new lock-in. Yeah, I mean, it has to be, it has to be. All right, talk about Apogee, because you're one of the key pieces of the platform is Apogee. Yeah. Talk about your focus, obviously you're still learning, getting your feet wet, and you, but again, you get your running shoes on, you're experienced. What is the platform that you're handling? Yeah. Give, us, give a quick description. No, Apogee, uh, an acquisition which uh, Google made a few years ago, and I think it's a kind of center space uh, offering which allows customers to really do the life cycle and the digital transformation of the technologies they have in the back end. Right, and uh, the Apogee team has done a great job of keeping, being the market leader and keep on, keeping on innovating. I think the next phase for us as we look forward is to, one is to make it very pure, completely integrated and make it very seamless with all the rest of the Google properties we have and the assets we have. And second thing is to really uh, add other capabilities around it so that customers, depending on what they want to do, like, on, like, like line of business or IT teams, to be able to now unlock a lot of the application data they have and expose it to both the customers, partners, as well as internal employees in a simple, easy manner. So a lot of monetization can happen, monitoring, metering, all those things can be really great for them. So there's a lot of headroom in Apogee. Uh, very, very much, yes. Technology and business benefit. So, head of platform. You know, we in the industry, we hear platform, we kind of understand what it's all about. People outside the industry, maybe somewhat of an amorphous concept to them. 
So my first question though, before we get into this, what attracted you to Google? No, I think that the, basically, if I look at uh, the strength Google brings as, a, as, a, as an organization, be it in terms of innovation, be it in terms of investment, the infrastructure, and the willingness to invest in the long term. I think that is really, really attractive. I think for me to kind of have the ability to kind of invest and grow a lot of the footprint we have to offer to a customer and solve the business problems in a little more longer term than short term oriented, I think it's very, very exciting. So let's talk more about platforms. So I think a platform is a set of capabilities steeped in sort of an architectural premise. There's maybe some dogma in there that you've got to you yeah. know, have, have a cap these capabilities that ultimately you're going to deliver value and turn into products and customer value. What, what is platform to, to you and, and, and what's that sort of, how should we think about sure. that flywheel effect? Yeah, the way I look at the platform is basically one, is a, is a capabilities a customer require one, one to build an application integrate it and be able to secure it and manage it, right? So all the different capabilities you require, instead of having to get piecemeal of it and have to tie it all together yourself, you can now do it in a much easier fashion and, and a vendor provides you the capability as one integrated capability, right? So that's really what I think of as a platform. So your, your constituencies are obviously your internal developers, your external developers, who are, who are you serving with that platform? I think a few, few audiences, no doubt developers to be able to build an application. But I think the bigger audience, uh, if you go beyond that, is really apps IT and a line of business. So today more and more line of business are doing extension to an application. They're doing integration without having to write code. And if you can provide a powerful tool where any person who is not a professional developer can do that kind of tasks and get more power out of the application or of the business systems they're running, the value is immense. And that's really, I think, the audience we need to be able to attract and be able to now cater to so that they have a lot more benefits from using the Google platform. Is that Part technical capability, part you know, go to market. How, how do you? It's, it's, that? It's, it's definitely a lot of work to be done from the product perspective to make it simple, yeah. uh, make it more consumable by uh, apps IT and line of business user versus professional developers. But also in terms of how you design it and make it self-service uh, and attractive enough for an audience who is not really kind of having to do, do, do deal with a lot of the stuff themselves. Okay, so that's presumably what we should be expecting from you. Maybe talk about your priorities and give us a little, you know, how should we be sort of judging you down the road, yeah. judging you, not the right term, but what <laughs> milestone should we be looking for? Uh, it's a little too early, I mean, this is four weeks at yeah. Google, but I think uh, the way to look at this is, are we basically catering to all the new requirements you see from a lot of the next generation users? And I think uh, the ability for us to kind of expand that capability uh, in a platform offering, so it's not just catering to one kind of an audience, but also new buyers, which we are seeing as, as users coming into the platform. So over the next six months to nine months, you'll start seeing some of those things which we do. Is this a new role? Uh, was it sort of by committee before? Or? No, I think Google has been doing a lot of these things. I think we're trying to think about rationalize few of the areas and how do we keep on expanding. There's a lot of headroom for Google Cloud to go and we continue to kind of look at where we need to be and uh, how we can keep on expanding and meet those requirements. I mean, talk about um, Thomas Curry, and also known as TK, on stage. He's been busy, he's going to come on theCUBE eventually, but he's talking to a lot of customers we heard, hundreds of customers have been promoted. Uh, you worked with him at Oracle, what's he like? Share some color commentary on, on TK. Um, he's got the chops, obviously, sure, enterprise. Sure. What's he like? People, yeah, he's yeah, new I've CEO. Worked, yeah, yeah, I've worked with Thomas for 18 plus years and I think he's probably one of the smartest person I've worked with for sure. But I think it's very strategic vision and clear execution. I think combination is rare for a lot of people. We have a very clear vision, but how do you execute and get operationally, make those things possible? I think that really what Thomas brings to any, uh, any place he gets into. Right, so he has a very clear idea of where we should be going. He talks to a lot of customers, gets a lot of input, and has a clear plan in terms of how we del what we should be doing. And then he gets very involved with, this, with the execution, operational work which we do, right? So that is the unique uh, thing he'll bring to the table. He can get down and dirty too under yeah. the hood. Oh, very much, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> so I think it's fun to work with him that way. So I want to ask you a, a personal question. I know we've been following your career. Certainly you've got a great, great technical background as well. As you look at the cloud and having all that enterprise experience, you've seen many ways of innovation, hardware, software, evolution to the cloud. As you look at the modern enterprise, you mentioned IT apps, apps IT. There's a whole new app revolution, renaissance happening. Yeah. You got hybrid and multi-cloud. What does it mean to be enterprise ready? If you could take all the learnings in your career as you look at the new, you know, out in the new pasture mm -hmm. of the next 10 years plus, 
the sea change is happening. What's your vision? I think the enterprise ready for us, I and mean, I think that's what we are uh, doing a lot of, if you saw today from Thomas's announcements, like there's a lot of things we are planning and we have been doing already and we need to do as well. But I think it's understanding the existing landscape of a customer. In the enterprise space, there's a huge amount of investment many customers have made, and systems you can't rip and replace instantly. And to be able to understand how you operate in that kind of constraints as well as context is very important when you build new generational applications. So kind of having the connectivity, connectivity and the tissue of kind of making it all work together while you kind of modernize and digitally transform your offering, I think is a critical way of thinking. And I think that's what you'll start seeing a lot more of that from the product planning, product delivery perspective, and understanding that uh, debt many customers have to pay before they can move everywhere, right? So you saw today with Thomas' announcement about hybrid, which allows you to kind of interoperate with existing investments, multi-cloud because you might be running in multiple environments, as well as you saw some of the things we're doing to really make it easy and simple to integrate with the existing yeah. portfolio customers have. It was interesting is that you know he also mentioned industries, yes. which you guys at Oracle certainly you knew that knew that yeah. every industry's got unique requirements. But it's interesting; it kind of validates on a cube. We, Dave and I have talked for years that the, the, the cloud's horizontally scalable, yet with data and AI, you can be differentiated at the industry level. So you can actually have best of both worlds now. That's that's what I see kind of coming together yeah. at the platform because you have to have a platform that enables. Sure. How do you see that, do you agree with that? Do you see that shaping out? How would you see that, that ability to take advantage of the horizontal scalability, connective tissue, plus enabling this horizontal yeah. specialization for industry solutions? Yeah, yeah, no, I think you saw, again, some of the announcements around that, where the, how do you make it more pertinent to a particular end user? Right, each industry has specific data models, specific uh, use cases and you need to be able to provide and cater to that. So you have to have a horizontal platform which can cater to multiple different things you want to do, but then you have to provide domain-specific content. And that's what you'll start seeing, uh, I think as, as you as you uh, alluding, that Oracle does some of these things, and other companies do that, and we will do some of that stuff as well. Well, it's an interesting point, because your point about horizontal scaling, because it, it, it creates this, uh, another disruption agenda. Yeah, you could disrupt search and productivity software, but you can also traverse industries with your partners. We were talking about Apache before with the API economy. You can see Google and its partners getting into healthcare, financial services, autonomous vehicles. I mean, virtually every industry because it's, yes. it's data. And that's to me is the exciting part of the platform. No, no doubt, and I think Google, of course, brings a lot of strength in terms of the modeling and the AI, ML uh, work they've been doing for many years, and that can really uh, accelerate capabilities around these things in a much, much more easier way than it would be otherwise. And you kind of have a clean sheet of paper in the enterprise That's in a true. big way, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. So. I mean, great to see you. I'm glad we can get your first public appearance at Google here on theCUBE. Okay. Appreciate the commentary. I want to, a final, a final question is, personal question. <laughs> if you were uh, a cloud architect for a large enterprise that had complex to simple workloads and everything in between, what would you be doing in advising and, and, and uh, setting up and architecting, what would you, what would no, you do? I think that the best thing to do, uh, I think, is to identify different categories of applications. I don't think this is one, one thing fits all, right? So just define what are the categories of applications you have. Some of them are cloud ready and make sure that you can start accelerating that adoption and moving to more agile delivery model. Second are the applications which you might want to now start thinking about uh, rewriting and then having a roadmap associated with that. So you're not trying to go and rip and replace because that has an impact on your business capabilities, right? And then third thing, we might want to look at retiring some of the stuff and then, hey, you have to modernize. I mean, there's nothing, there's no way out of it. Just like software goes through cycles of innovation and changes, every 10 years you see a new stack, stack of technologies come out and you have to remain competitive by adopting some of these things. So I think that's kind of recognizing what you have and yeah. how you adopt. Uh, is probably the number and one thing. And you'd be probably driving containers throughout. No doubt, I think everything. so. I think the, the, the technologies out there now with the containerization is much, much simpler uh, to kind of go and run and write once, run anywhere kind of thing. Those scenarios is kind of what the guy from Kohl's was saying today in the keynote. Yeah, they're very similar, yes. He, he, yes. Didn't, he didn't say this, there's one use case of just leave it there, which yeah. was interesting to me. <laughs> so, yeah. do, nothing, people, yeah. do nothing was not his strategy. <laughs> it, is, it is for some. Yeah. <laughs> Amit Zavri here on theCUBE, great, great insight. Thanks, thanks, thanks for guys, sharing. Great to see you guys. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. Amit Zavri, head of platform at Google Cloud here on theCUBE. I'm Trevor Dave Vellante. Stay with us for more day one coverage. We're here for three days live. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>